This is 1942 Joint Strike on the Xbox Live Arcade. You have a selection of three different airplanes to choose from, and the first end boss is named Bodan, which looks suspiciously like Rodan from the old school Godzilla movies. An interesting fact, did you know that George Takei, who played Sulu on the original Star Trek series, did some of the English voice dub work for the Rodan movie that was brought over to the United States, which is an excellent movie and I highly recommend it. Sadly, this game does not have any giant mutated ill-tempered monsters that try to destroy you with plasma rays, but what we do have is a whole lot of bad guys that fly at you and try to shoot you down with airplanes that somehow exist in 1942, but not the 1942 that we really know that existed. The bottom line here is, this game is fantastic. Just leave it to Capcom to bring out a tremendous old school game, redo the graphics and the style for those of us who like these vertical scrolling shooting games, and remember the original 1942 and 1943 on the NES, you should all be very pleased with this game. And right before I played this game, I spent a couple hours playing 1943 on my Nintendo to get back into it and remember what the gameplay was all about. And one could argue that the slogan, the marketing slogan for 1942 Joint Strike could be this. 1942 Joint Strike, you're not just flying over endless miles of water anymore. The graphics, the detail, the terrain. Capcom uses three-dimensional background elements and seamlessly blends them together with two-dimensional gameplay that flows like a cool stream down an alpine mountain being touched ever so lightly by a dusting of fine snow. I should write for a wine magazine that sounds just like the bull that they'd use to describe a glass of red wine. And if that red wine was made in 1942 and blew the crap out of wave after wave of airplanes, I would say that that's a fine red wine with a complex finish that reminds me of the South Pacific, the smell of the islands, the waves, the leaves. It all comes together with just a hint of pepper, and I've completely lost wherever the hell I was going with my comments. I mean, there's really not that much you can say about this game that you can't see by looking at it with your own eyes. You don't need to tilt the glass and sniff it to know that 1942 Joint Strike is an ass-kicking vertical shooting game. I like everything about it. They've added in all the prerequisite elements. You have a variety of weapons. You have a variety of difficulty settings. And the whole joint strike thing relates to the fact that you can play it with a friend over Xbox Live, and the two of you can then use a joint strike against your opponents. Now, I didn't have any friends with me at the time. Sadly, my dog cannot play Xbox. She's purely an Atari dog. End bosses are persistent and relentless. Two personality traits mixed together in an oak barrel to give you that smooth end boss finish. I don't know where the wine analogies keep coming from today. If I were going to have anything with 1942, it would be a beer.
The controls are fairly standard, and the game handles like you'd expect it to. Each of the airplanes has a different speed, different power, different armor. There's there's three different power-up weapons. You have your standard shot, your, your shotgun-like blast, and then the laser cannons. If you hold down the fire button, it charges your weapon and unleashes one powerful blast. I didn't use that very much. And you can also launch missiles. The missiles came in quite handy. And you also have a super bomb, explodey bomb thing that blows up all the enemies on screen. And you can use that on the end bosses. So there's nothing really dramatically new here. You get more points for blowing up your enemies the closer that you are to them and you get an extra life every 500,000 points. Therefore, it behooves you to get as close to your opponents as possible before you incinerate them, because the end bosses do get tricky as the game progresses and you can use as many lives as possible. Not all of the same elements from 1943 on the NES came over here. Sadly, I did not see the cow that appears after you blow up all the battleship turrets. At least I always thought that was a cow. I really like the backgrounds and the cinematic touches that they put into the game. The music is nice. It's nothing to really stand out from the other World War II style games out there, but it does hold the game together nicely. And although I prefer the exciting rock slash techno soundtracks on a game like Sylphid, 1942 Joint Strike is still a solid shooter in every respect. And in fact, it's a lot like Silphied in that you don't just take one shot and explode like you do in a lot of shooting games. You can take multiple hits and then wear down your power, which you see on the top left. And then you can pick up some health generation power-ups. Now the difference between this and Silphied is that when you die in Silphied, you die, it's over. But I do particularly like shooting games where your spaceship or airplane can take a couple shots before it explodes because that does give you a little bit of a margin of error. It makes things much less frustrating. Like, I would consider 1942 Joint Strike to be like a soft, buttery Chardonnay. Whereas a game like Einhander which has absolutely no margin for error, would be more like a harsh, dry Merlot. And again, with the wine references. I can't even tell you when the last time I've had a glass of wine is. I don't know where they're coming from. Look, getting off the wine analogies, I think this game would go best with a cold pilsner. Maybe what I'm trying to get at with all this wine talk is that 1942 is a fine vintage year for a video game.